Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ our Lord. When we consider the immensity of the creation, which we are able to observe and study through the instrument aids of science, such as the Hubble telescope, we're able to optically, optically examine places which we uh, never before in history have been able to look upon with our eyes. And, and by this, we're able to understand that the cosmos, the universe, is a very large place. And that we, on this planet Earth, this very special place we call home, are very small. Only just a, just a little speck of dust in this great immensity of creation. But it is our place. It is where we live. It is our habitation. And how do we know what our place is? How do we know what our purpose is? This is something that all of the philosophers of history fell short in coming to know is the purpose and the true meaning of life by definition. But we had one mediator from God only one who was able to communicate to us our purpose by manifesting himself in flesh and coming and revealing about our relationship with our creator. That was our Lord Jesus Christ, by whose word we live, by whose example we follow, and by who our salvation is made possible. This is Reverend Alan Childs, pastor of Bandera Mission, a network of home churches, which we are building in people's lives, an institution by which we may trust in our Lord God throughout the remainder of our days here on earth, in this small place, that we might live and become a part of that greater place which the Lord has prepared for us. Today I'm going to share with you some understanding from the Word of God. I'm going to go to a place which many have studied and sought to bring explanation uh, to the media, to the public, for quite some time. And I'm going to break away from the explanations that you've probably heard about some of this. And I'm going to try to be as brief as possible and only take a small segment to give you something. That will help you. I'm going to be going to the book of Revelation. To chapter 13. Not in the Greek. But reading from the Middle English version. Of the King James Version Bible. So if you have your King James Version Bible. Go over to Revelation chapter 13. And we're going to be looking. Uh, you can read the entire chapter. Talking about the first beast. Second beast etc. But what I'm going to focus on today is something that uh, is introduced after the identification of the second beast in the book of Revelation chapter 13, and that is the image that they create and make. And I'm going to explain what that is to you. And by understanding and knowing what this is, it will help you. It will help you in understanding the times and the placement of where the scripture is placed in the time sequence of our modern days and how we relate to fulfillment of prophecy. I'm going to state it very simply to you. First off, let's, let's read just a few verses. And this is referring to the Bible uh, character of the second beast here. Uh, Revelation 13, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell upon it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he, talking about the second beast, doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven, on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwelleth on the earth, by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwelleth on the earth, 
that they should make an image to the beast. Now here's what I'm going to explain to you exactly what this image is. Exactly. We're reading in the 14th verse, the 13th chapter of Revelation. I'm going to reveal to you exactly what this image is. And I'm going to read this one more time to you. That they should make an image to the beast. It's not the beast, but it is an image to the beast. Which had the wound by, the, by a sword and did live. Now here, talking about the image, going on about it. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Now this image was something that was made, basically manufactured. You must understand that, that this image was something made. It was something manufactured. And it's saying here that he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Not the beast, but the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause them that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, when we talk about something that is made, something that is manufactured, Mankind has been able to make and manufacture all sorts of things throughout history, depending on the technology of his day. But in the day in which we live now, we are seeing a leap in our industrial technology and in our scientific technology and our computer technology to where that even we hold in our palm of our hand Powerful instruments of communication, which before were nothing more than science fiction, but now they're a reality. We hold them in our hand. So why would it be so far-fetched for us now in this time to be able to interpret the scripture, to understand that man would be able to make a machine image, to make a mechanical image, an image that would represent something far more sinister, that it would be given the power to speak, that this image would actually take on animation and be able to speak to us. Now, I know before some have compared this with video and such, and uh, I understand the reasons for doing that. But what I'm going to tell you is that this image will be more like an android that computer technology, and when you try to position yourself in the time sequence, it's, it's something that's been growing in leaps and bounds for the last few decades. From the time man was able to go to the moon with the Apollo program, the miniaturization of computer technology now enables us to put in our hands more powerful computer technology than what it took to take the Saturn V rocket to and from the moon back to Earth, or parts of it. When you think about advancements like that, how far are we away truly from AI technology, artificial intelligence? And when you really consider 666, in understanding that man was created in the sixth day by his maker, our creator, that mankind himself, a creation of the sixth day, would in his own way create an image likened unto himself that would be able to speak to mankind. But what spirit, what spirit will control this image? It will be one of no natural affection. It will be one without nature, one without what will be considered the human frailties and flaws and faults. And there will be those who trust in the thinking computer 
more than they will in mankind. And the difference is that this computer will not look to God for guidance. This computer will be totally atheist. It will not recognize God in any way or any sense. And the image which speaks to us, a representative of this, simply will lead us in the wrong direction. There are many woes coming upon us in the last days which we must beware of. This little bit I'm sharing with you from Revelation 13 is just a small parcel of some of the many things we're going to talk about in the days to come. This is Reverend Alan Childs. Asking you not to fear, but to put your trust in the Lord for our days and for our times and to pray for the harvest of souls, to pray for a positive relationship with mankind and our service to God as we move forward, move forward in ministry, move forward in life, and raise our families to serve Almighty God and not to serve the inventions of man. Heavenly Father, bless us, be with us, keep us, guard us, lead us in understanding and truth. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Farewell, my friends, until we talk again. Good day.